<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rewatchers Council. It's LGRN's Buffy the Vampire Slayer Rewatch series. We're going to go through all. <laughs> I don't know if that was appropriate. Uh, we're going to go through all 144 ish episodes. 144 episodes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't worry. I have to lie, too. There's. There could Why be a people lie to? There's 144. Lots of seats on the council. You don't have to be for all. If you don't want, it's fine. I'm going to be here. Spoken it's from the dark. man who watched 12 seasons of The Big Bang Theory in two and a half weeks. Who oh, you yeah. did? How dare you? <laughs> I have watched this series 12 or 15 times. Uh, Delia, welcome to the council. I know that uh, you haven't watched much of the beginning. You haven't watched much of the end. But you've seen lots of the ooey gooey middle. Yeah, I think I've seen like parts of season two through parts of season like five, and that's about it. Ooh, you're in so, for a treat. Um, yeah, I I had never seen this episode we're covering here today until all of us were in uh, Tucson a little bit ago. Yeah, well, maybe, not all of us. Yeah, maybe someone was absent at the time. It's the guy. <laughs> we have a newbie to the Scoobies, a first time watcher. In fact, it's he's like 15 minutes out of watching the very first episode of Buffy the Vampire yeah. Slayer. Ferris Muthan is with us as well. Hi, Ferris. Doing good, Rob. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate oh, you. It's our pleasure. Always a seat on the Even though this the you. channel I helped create. <laughs> how dare you? Listen, how could you? Anyways, well, is, is that what um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer people are called? They're called Scoobies? That their their little uh, gang of helpers, sure the Scoobies. They're I called the Scoobies. Isn't yeah, that like? Isn't that like? Spike, a, I believe Spike names them the Scoobies. Isn't that uh? Yeah. Isn't that Scooby like, gang. like the Scooby I know, but like, isn't Scooby that like? Do. Can't you get sued? Well, how how? Scooby Doo. I don't think they ever say Scooby Doo. I think yeah. they just call them the Scoobies. I think there's got to be a way. They never got sued. You, and you know it, what? Don't bring guy, it up now. The show is, that is why she's in the Scooby movies. I, I don't believe it is. No, uh, oh, it may not have helped. It may not have hurt. It may not have hurt that she was familiar with the term Scooby Gang. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> with her husband, Freddie Prince Jr., by the way. Shout out to Freddie. I think Shout that's one of the reasons why she got cast in that, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, welcome to the Hellmouth, their very first episode ish of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Originally aired, guys, March 3rd. 1997 to give a little context to that damn a little context the number one song in america that week was wannabe by the spice girls oh i love that song in the uk it was don't speak by no doubt wait what yep, there you go that's weird wouldn't it yeah, be also true. wannabe you no, no 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 they always have different ones and the number one movie that week was uh, the re the uh, remake of Empire Strikes Back. The so remake? You, you mean the, yeah, the, the re-release? Re -release. Oh, the re-release? special editions or whatever oh, they call them. Oh, yeah, the, the 90s special edition ones. Mm -hmm. Never uh, watched them. <laughs> you never watched them? You've never oh. seen a Star Wars movie? because there's no oh, I have. i just never seen those 90s ones. I had, I had the VHS tape that said Star Wars on it. Nice. Not, not A New Hope. So I didn't know what a new hope was. Yeah. So someone had to explain it to me that George Lucas changed the names. Yeah, that guy annoys me. <laughs> Listen, bring it up on the uh, Star Wars uh, uh, Rewatchers Council. This is the Buffy the Vampire Slayer Rewatchers Council. Welcome to the Hellmouth. Ferris, your first time watching. What did you think? I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, it's very 90s. I'm a big fan of the 90s. Very 90s. I love, I love the 90s. Um, Xander's an idiot. Um, does oh. not know how to talk to women at all. Yeah, can't well, even say hi properly. Mm -mm. Um, no. bit of a nerd, bit of a geek. I guess a geek. More, not no, a he's definitely not a nerd. He's yeah, definitely he, not a geek. He's a he's a geek. No, I don't think he's a geek either. I think he's he's like one of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. Also, too, man. A lot of people in this show I recognize, man. Like Darla, the blonde-haired lady. Mm -hmm. That bit the dude at the beginning. I'm like, I recognize that woman. Yep. She's in like a bunch of other TV shows. Yeah, she's uh, mm -hmm. that's Julie Benz. She was Rita on Dexter. Yes, 
that's where I recognize her from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, dude, oh my god, that hurt. Oh my, that hurt last scene on Dexter, bro. That was heartbreaking, man. Yeah, that show went downhill fast. Yeah. Fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Darla, the very first vampire you see, uh, she kills uh, her date, played by Carmine Giovanzo, Gio Giovanizo or something like that. I don't know much about him, but I guess he had a long run in CSI New York. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I had not watched. Sorry. I had not watched. Kind of the CSI. One, not it, it, one it makes second. sense that the procedural fan got very excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that high school is Torrance High School. They also shot uh, Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero there, but they only got to shoot it in one hallway. Like every time you see shots of the school inside the school. It's that just one that, that one hallway shot a different way. Yo, 902 and 0, bro. God, man, that's a 90s show. <laughs> that's a 90s show. Yeah, well, so <laughs> is this. So is this. Okay, now we meet Buffy. She's having a, a prophecy dream. Uh, this is yes. something that uh, is tied over from the movie. There isn't much that's tied over from the movie. Her mom, Joyce, completely different than the movie. Like her mom, Joyce, I don't even know if she's named Joyce in the movie. A uh, bit of an air kid, doesn't care, whatever. She likes partying. Uh, and their parents were together for that one as well. And she didn't burn down the school in the movie. She's told that she burned down the school right away in this one. I guess that's something that Joss Whedon wanted to have happen, mm -hmm. that they didn't let him do it. And so he said, well, whatever. We'll do it in the TV show. Uh, if you notice on the credits, you'll see uh, 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 producer credits to Fran Rubel and Kaz Kazuki. They had nothing to do with the show. Fran Rubel directed it, and Kat, her husband Kaz came up with the money for the movie. So because they got the money together for the movie, they had the producer credits on the television show. Uh, like John never, Favreau on every spent, Avengers one, movie. Right. Never spent one minute working on it. Uh, here's a fun fact. They found out afterwards, Dolly Parton was a shadow producer of this show. Sounds about right. Yeah. Dolly Parton. Love Dolly. You want to yeah. know who's also a, who's, a, who's a shadow who's a shadow producer of an iconic TV show? Okay. Uh Lucille Ball was the producer of Star Trek. Oh yeah, and Mission Impossible. Her and dad, yeah. Well, the, it was made by Desi Lu Studios, so. Yeah. Desi and Lucille Arnaz. Uh should we talk a little bit about Sarah Michelle Gellar? Uh Queen. This is the role that will she'll always be remembered by. Uh she had already won a daytime Emmy. She was Kendall in All My Children. Susan I Lucci's daughter. Yeah, I remember a tiny little bit. And I tell you one other Really? Thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the show. But on the Susan show. Lucci's what? daughter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, She's a soap opera. Yo, man, if you guys haven't seen our soap opera video. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys something. I almost, I almost stopped this entire show. Because I found out one fact about Sarah Michelle Gellar. Made me a little sick to my stomach. Oh no! Huge Arsenal fan. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, yeah. That's my lady. Shout out to her. <laughs> okay, so it's Buffy's first day of school. Sit, sitting at Rob, wallowing that. Wallow. I have been. Well, you know how long Go I've known Brentford. this. You know how long I've had. I've known this. It's eating me up inside. Uh, her mom, Joyce, is played by Christine Sutherland, who's terrific. I don't. I always thought that I knew her from a bunch of stuff, but I guess I've only known her from uh, Buffy. Uh, this is the only thing I know her from. That's for sure. I don't uh, even know her. I think she was. I think it said that she was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but I never saw it. What? Oh. Yeah. You've never seen okay. the Rick Moranis classic, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. No. How do you Rick Moranis? Oh, yeah, I love Rick Moranis, but I just never saw the movie. Like, it came out when I was, like, 15 years old or something like that. So I was like, well, why would That's I bother? That's prime, I honey, I, I shrunk the kids age, I, I don't. I don't know if it no, is. No, it's not. I don't know if it is. <laughs> not. It is. I don't know what it is. Okay. Damn, I guess I was a weird 15-year-old then. The, yeah. Ooh, well, uh, the next character we meet, Xander Harris, your new favorite, Ferris. Dumbass. So he... <laughs> So he's right. He's you see him riding on a skateboard. Uh, don't get used to that, Ferris. It's the only time you ever see him ride a skateboard. <laughs> really? 
I was, uh, yeah. Uh, I, think, like, I was you know a little. What? I was having seen the the middle chunk of the series. I was a little confused by Xander on his skateboard. So I like, was, wait, I does was, he like? Well, like, what happened? Like, what what happened? Did did they make like a, it was like a character choice? No. Nope. Like what happened? No. It was hard to light. Oh, the skateboard. Yeah, like to do it or whatever. Oh. And have it I guess it was hard lighting it, so they they stopped doing it. I think he's. Uh, I was listening to the uh, uh, commentary track, and he said. Uh, uh, like two other times, you'll see him carrying a skateboard just for some kind of continuity, and then they just said, "Forget it." So there you go. It's, it's not continuity issues. He just stopped having a skateboard. It's not that. Bad. Well, they just wanted to show, like, you introduce the guy in a skateboard and then wiping out, and then yeah. I thought his homie was the skater. I've recognized his homie. I've seen that dude in other stuff. He always He's... plays that high school airhead. I don't know the dude's name. Ooh, you mean uh, Jesse? The, yeah, the guy who gets bit. I'm trying to remember yeah, his Jesse. name. Gosh darn it! I'm trying. To, I can't think of his name right now. I'll think of it. I know that he's from Edmonton. I remember he's Canadian. That. Yeah, he's a Canadian guy. Oh. Uh, 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 yeah, I won't remember it off the top of my head, but uh, we'll talk. He's been about in other stuff. In I know that. Oh yeah, yeah, he's been in all kinds of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think more bit parts. I don't know if he ever had like this huge role or something, anything like that, but he kept getting work. So I know that. And he, he probably showed up in all your little procedurals. Knowing him? No, I would have I known him. How dare you? How dare you? Oh, but uh, we uh, also meet at that same moment. Oh, I think she's got it. Let's something see. Metcalf. Something Eric Metcalf. Balfour. Eric Balfour. There you go. Not Metcalf. I'm thinking Mark Metcalf. He had a recurring role on Six Feet Under. Okay. He was oh. Eddie on the OC, hmm. and he was in a Haven. I don't know what Haven is. He was in Haven. He also That's... had a role on on Twenty Four as Milo Pressman. Hmm. No, there you go. I think I, I think I got one one year of Twenty Four, one day of Twenty Four. Is that right? I got one of them in, and that was good enough. I got I got it after that. It was fine. Uh, so we also meet Willow Rosenberg. My favorite from the show, uh, and Allison Hannigan uh, does a terrific job right mm. off the bat. Uh, you get who Willow is immediately. Um, I recognized her. Uh, I remember watching a movie uh, called My Stepmother is an Alien. She was in that, and uh, a co-star of hers from that movie will also be joining the cast. But that isn't for another year or so. So, uh, fun fact. Okay. She's married to Wesley in real life. Yeah. Well, we would have talked about that when we meet Wesley, but do you even know who Wesley is? Yeah, because I watched Angel. Oh, you watched it. Well, there you go. <laughs> you could have said at least said that. that. You've never watched Bobby. I, yeah, I watched Angel and I never so watched yeah. I watched the sequel series, but like the spinoff, but I never watched the original. Unbelievable. So when Cordelia shows up, I'm like, hey, yo, Cordelia. Weirdo. <laughs> I, I show, I'll tell you why she's a weirdo, but it's an angel, not in Buffy. Yeah, you, you, well, you can hold on to that. Keep that under your hat. See, when people said Alice, Alice and Hannigan, I think of American Pie. Yeah, of course. I, I don't think of Buffy. Oh, my goodness. So, not even uh, How I Met Your Mother or whatever. No, she Rob, I've never, I've never seen that. But you've seen... The Big Bang Theory? Yeah. All 12 seasons in an entire day or whatever? Two weeks. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Fine, I watched it. How I Met Your Mother. How dare you, sir? Okay. Uh, but then, uh, no, yeah, well, most of it. Most of it's fine. Yeah, it's watching. Oh, the last episode? Well, yeah, that last. I didn't like most of the last season. But Rob, we're here to talk about Buffy. What is wrong with you, man? I am going to attack you. I swear <laughs> you go. Uh, let's move on. Uh, next character we'll meet quickly, uh, Principal Flutie. He is deliciously played by Ken Lerner. You call me he Bob. Was, he was in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but people most don't people do that. Don't. Yeah, most, most people don't. Uh, he was in The Running Man, I guess. And uh, I guess he had a pretty good run on The Goldbergs, but I never saw that. Uh, I love that scene with him tearing up the transcript and then uh, uh, piecing them back together with tape and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. good. Um, then uh, she leaves the she leaves the uh, uh, principal's office, runs into Xander, or, or runs into a student. She talks to Xander, or whatever, and when she's walk, walking away, Xander goes, "Hey, uh, you forgot your uh, steak. steak." Yeah, so good. Yeah. 
Uh, next, we're going to meet Cordy and Cordelia Case. Now, you know who Cordy is, Ferris. Yes, I do. Uh, Cordy's my favorite and, character. Uh, what? And that, certainly. What? Certainly the MVP. She's a piece of shit. Oh, my God. No, she's not. <laughs> yeah. well, she's supposed to be the mean girl, right? She is. She is a character that's most like Buffy from the movie. That's who Buffy was. And originally, Sarah Michelle Gellar was cast to be Cordelia, I guess. And I guess originally, uh, 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 Charisma Carpenter uh, was uh, uh, auditioning to play Buffy and stuff like that. I guess they just kind of switched roles around or whatever. It's like Tom Hiddleston <laughs> with Thor. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. That's exactly right. And they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> You're not gonna be Thor. <laughs> the interaction between Cordelia and Willow, when you get to see Cordelia's true colors, uh, one of my favorite scenes in the entire series, where she tells her uh, she she's glad she's seen the softer side of Sears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's who Cordelia. That's how you is. know. This, this is how you know it's a '90s show. She yeah. said Sears, dog. She said Sears. Is there no more Sears? No, no. Rob. Sears, no, they don't Sears exist is anymore. Very much gone. <laughs> I never pay attention. There's lots of stuff you guys have. Like, you guys still have Kmart's and stuff like that. No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, you do in Grand Forks. There's still a Kmart. Very what? few of them left. Very few. Uh, yeah, there is. There is. A, I remember going to a Kmart growing up. Nah, man. So, yo, man. God rest that <laughs> Sears catalog. What? Yeah. The Sears catalog, you would get it and like you just look at it and be like, oh, one day I'm gonna afford all this good stuff. And then you and then I grew up and guess what happened? Sears went out of business. But God rest it. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious. I grew up Thanks, I grew Jeff up Bezos. Yeah, I grew up wanting to buy that new oven. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That you'd was go it. You'd, you'd go search the appliances and stuff you like did. that. Like Rob, yeah, man, Rob. I, I, like I was like, man, I need to get a toaster, the oven. <laughs> You don't get a panini press. All right. Mm -hmm. Back to Cordelia. Okay. Cor yeah. Cordelia, uh, for sure, uh, for this first episode, she was my MVP uh, all, all throughout it. She was great. Uh, yeah. As the character that changes the most, I would assume, between the first time you see her and the last time you see her, last time so. being an angel. Uh I'm trying to think who else that has a huge arc, but there's a lot. There's a, they all they all kind of grow in their own way, don't they? Uh, then we finally go to the library for the first time, uh, and we get to meet Giles, Rupert Giles. My guy, it's Ferris. my guy, man. That's my guy. guy. That's my guy. guy. I love this yeah. guy. Yeah, and Buffy kind of blows him off. Uh, Anthony uh, Head. Yeah. Anthony Stewart had his brother, I believe, originated the role of I said Judas, I believe, in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. And he had oh, a wow. big hit. He had a big hit with uh, One Night in Bangkok in the Murray 80s. Head. Murray Head, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there you go. So a little context because there might be singing later. In mm. fact, there will be singing later. No, there's but always there singing be. in these shows. Back in the day, man, every show had a musical episode, man. I think it's because of the show, but we're going to keep going. Uh, let's, uh, okay, we're going to cut ahead to some things because there's a lot of, you know, people talking, people getting to know each other, blah, blah, blah. We have lots of time to cover that. We have 144 episodes to get people together. I guess uh, we could also talk quickly about Angel. Uh, Angel is uh, met real quick uh, at first. They weren't sure if they wanted to make him a vampire. I think at first uh, Whedon was actually against making him a vampire. So that's why he gave her the the, the silver cross in the box and stuff like that. So they could make it kind of, oh, is he or is he kind of thing? Well, of course he is. They said, yeah, well, they had to do it or whatever. The wrong side of the tracks kind of thing. Uh, one thing. Now, this is like the most important thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. As a couple of, uh, you're both from the United States of America. Well, I'm not mm -hmm. speaking out of school. Is it common for small towns to have nightclubs that allow teenagers in it? No. 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 It made no sense. It, <laughs> it makes no, no sense. sense. Yo, what are they drinking? 
What is Cordelia holding as she's talking to them? Is that what is that? Is that juice? It has to be juice because she's underaged. She can't be drinking alcohol. They're in grade 10. They're in grade 10. They're sophomores. They're sophomores. Yeah, yeah you know, also too, man. I, honestly, I didn't they expect are 15 any, years old. I didn't, I didn't yeah, and they all look 30. Okay. They all look 30. Let's be real here, man. Yeah. They're 15 and going. A lot on of 30. that's the clothes and the hair, and that was the 90s. Yeah. Um and what some of them were actually 30. Um, uh, so also two men. I did not expect Angel to show up in, in episode one. I thought he was like an I thought he was like a season two to three character. Oh no. I that man is there from the beginning. Really? I didn't know this. This episode marks a run of 24 straight years where David Boreanaz was on primetime television in the United States. So this show, the Angel mm -hmm. Bones. Bones, and then that uh, uh, one where he's like in the army. Oh, a uh, seal, uh, seal team. Seal team. Yeah. And then they moved it to uh, Paramount Plus. There you go. Damn, bro, that dude got checks. That man has had quite the television career. He, he did. He did fine for himself. For a guy that was picked up outside, just walking by the beach or something like that. He was walking his dog. What? The beach. Yeah, and one of the producers yeah. saw him and said, "That's our angel." Oh my, bro. You did, okay, bro? That ha you know that story happens a lot. Like the kid, the kid Angus Cloud from he Florida. wasn't in, you know he wasn't in Pittsburgh he was in Los Angeles so <laughs> no no so, also, dude, know, no no but I'm talking about like like the, the the kid Angus Cloud from Euphoria he was walking down the street in New York he was just walk he was literally he's not an actor he was really? walking to like get a sandwich yeah. and some lady was like following him and he was like yo why and then he like he like rolled up on it, was like hey lady why are you following me she's like oh I'm a casting director for HBO here's my card. Come to this destination and and we'll talk. And like he showed up, thinking like oh, it's all it's BS. He'll just leave afterwards. But he walked into the building and he ended up auditioning for Euphoria, and then he got it. Like oh, it's God. crazy, man. I, like these stories are so common. It's like oh yeah, I happens saw this. all the time. Happens all the time. No, it it shouldn't happen. That's what I'm saying. It should these there should never be a story where it's like you're walking down the street and some random random person's hey 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 man I work as a casting director for a show come out and then you actually go out that sounds like a that sounds like a kidnapping scheme you know what i mean you give them a destination they show up you you abduct them then you ship them off but now it's like they showed up and they auditioned and then now they're part of the one of the most iconic tv shows of all time there you go it's easy. all luck man and, yeah it's hollywood's luck. easy pretty simple and and he has and he has and he's a he has a movie star face his head like actors have big ass heads mm -hmm. his head is huge yeah. And his jaw, that brother can cut granite. <laughs> like, look at him. Look at his face. Look at yeah. his face, man. His face then. That yeah. was, I think yeah. I think every friend I had in high school had a crush on David Boreanaz as soon as the show came out. Makes oh, sense. Goodness. It makes sense. You know? <laughs> I think Ferris might have a crush on him. <laughs> no, I just I know because I realized this man has been a part of my life since like uh like forever. <laughs> like like this, like if you're telling me this man has been in primetime TV for 24 straight years, you know how yeah, old I am? It, it just ended last year or something. Yeah, you know how old I am? I'm 24 years old. This man has been in primetime TV my entire life. That's right. Damn right I have an emotional connection to David Boreanis. I finally <laughs> I finally learned how to say his name last year. Oh, really? Yeah, I kept calling him David Bornaz. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, I want to touch a little bit on just like the Buffy speak. Uh, they go pretty hard with it here in the first episode. It's going to taper off a little bit. They do have iconic things and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. the first time anybody ever says Google me or whatever is, is on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But they went through things like, well, there was like morbid much. I think that's a so, like how Cordy talks or whatever is going to become she stable. Details. Yeah, she they, wanted, yeah, yeah, they had uh, the, like the two girls talking in the uh, uh, in the locker room before mm -hmm. the uh, dead body falls out, and they kept saying "pause and neg, pause and neg." That is something that does not carry over. I'm going to tell you that right now. They uh, pause does. Trust me, no pause does. Pause neg. No, no neg. No pause. Yes. Yeah, I, well, I don't remember it at all after that. In well, the, Rob, me and you don't live in the same circles. Oh, no, we're you talking guys... about the show, Ferris. Yeah, oh. 
You say yeah, Paul's no, no, wait, are we, no. But you're talking about the, the their 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 lines become general vac, vac, vocabulary lexicon in the real world, right? No, mm -hmm. no. What do you mean, no? He's it's talking he about it carrying over yeah. through the rest of the show. Yeah, just the Buffy speaking this show. Oh, it doesn't really carry on. Some oh, like God. I thought we were yeah, talking about like, get, real life. Like some of the way, like Cordy in the way and stuff like that. But like any of the extras don't go like hard into like that speak. Like the movie, the movie that's mostly what everybody else was talking about and like how the how the other uh actors would talk mm -hmm. so they yeah it started out in the show and i think they just said no no no, we can't keep doing this that's that's a yeah. little too much so uh let's move on and we've already talked about the bronze oh i had the name for the bronze okay so the they have a band playing at the bronze all right mm -hmm. the most 90s looking crappy bar band i've ever seen I found out. It? I found out the name. Who is it? Sprung Monkey. Oh, oh! I thought you. I thought you were gonna say like some iconic band that got their <laughs> big break. Yeah. Like, oh, guys, it was Green Day. Oh, uh, no, it's like no, no, it wasn't. That singer was like three hundred pounds. There was no way he, they, that band was gonna be popular in the nineties. There was no way. But then that boring bass player. And how about how white were those people dancing in front? And those guys, like all the people up front dancing, were like thirty years old, and they're all. The, Hey man, you said you said it not you said it not me, dog. <laughs> unbelievable, me. yeah, unbelievable. Uh, also, uh, I just and then this is the series. This is the moment where I find out that uh, uh, Epstein Barr just isn't cool anymore. She's got to have what's it? She's got to have chronic hepatitis. Yeah, or chronic fatigue syndrome. Which last time I checked, was caused by Epstein Barr. Um, yeah, that that Dude, made me laugh. That like really Adelia. made me laugh. I hate yeah. just talk about diseases that your mom should have. Like it just threw me yeah, like, yo, this woman, yo man, she's weird. Okay, yeah. all right, Cordy, she's weird. yeah, you'll you'll love Cordy by the end of the show, Ferris. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, Buffy meets up with Willow. Uh, they get to talking. <laughs> Buffy gives her. Why is there a bar at a nightclub that, that allows someone? <laughs> and Willow looks I like 13 know. years old. <laughs> yeah, Willow looks really young. She looks 14. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, I'll just sit at the bar, do my homework. Like, what is? Like, what is that? We're, we're, we're cool with that. We're cool with that. We're no, because cool you know, because here's the thing. It. Here's the thing. I I heard of. Like in Miami in the eighties, okay, there was a club for teenagers. There, mm -hmm. it's it's where it's where um Uncle Luke Luke Campbell like Luther Campbell like yeah sure yeah, from yeah. Two Live Crew that's yeah. where he got his start from. He was he was also fourteen. He DJed those clubs. Okay, those may th those existed in the eighties, but this didn't look like one of those because in those clubs there wasn't a bar. No, you you don't just roll up to, like. Uh, or adults. Uh, there was like yeah. these are filled with adults. Yeah, you're right. having drunken thirty year olds mm -hmm. uh, mixing with teenagers, preteen mm -hmm. sometimes or preteen looking at the bar. Yeah, it just it just made no sense. It made no sense. Uh, yeah, so Buffy uh, gives uh, Willow a little advice. Uh, sees the day, and that's all she has to say to her. Like it sees the day, or because tomorrow you might be dead. And mm -hmm. that's what gets Will thinking, you know what? Th those are great words. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Like, if someone just said, like, I'm going to say to you, Ferris, seize the day. Are you going to go out and see some day? Yes. Oh, good. oh, my goodness. It is the power of words. Yes. I never even thought. I, I thought that if I said it, that you you think I'm a fool. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't deny it. Uh, so she walks off with this vampire the vampire they could tell he's a vampire because he's dressed like he's from the 1980s and stuff like that she says that he looks like debarge which, which is love. disrespectful to debarge because debarge just better than that he has the rhythm of the night i'll have you know <laughs> no yep dancing till the morning light uh janet jackson's first husband there you go El eddie debarge Elder Barge. Yeah, but his name was Eddie. I don't know. That, that was, that was Elder but no, the, 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 no, Rob, the Barge was the family name. It was yeah. the group. Yeah, I thought that his name was L, like E L, the Barge. No, 
No. All right. no. There you go. I learned. Look, now I learned something new. Yeah, because he had a, he had a brother named Bobby, yeah. who created the band Switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That that's what we do that. on the show, Rob. We and learn, man. Yeah, we're learning. Yes. I'm learning Buffy. We're also going to do a DeBarge re-listen series as well, but that'll be later. Yeah. That'll be after this show. Uh, so yes, yeah, so, uh, I found out that the guy's name is Thomas. It's never actually said. Uh, and anyway, we never even said that why these vampires are here, and that's because the master is going to is going to rise. And the master is played by Mark Mecca. Do you know who that is, Ferris? No. Growing up, I was a huge fan of videos by the band Twisted Sister. And Mark Metcalf would be the dad asking him uh, what he wants to do with his life before he'd say, I want to rock. And then he'd throw, be flown out of the window or whatever. He was also in Animal House. He was also the maestro in Seinfeld, if you know that at all. And if you don't know any of those, then God help us all. If you don't know Mark Metcalf by any of those. I don't. Okay, great. Then, yeah, just enjoy him as the master because I can't see him and he not hear that voice and start snickering every time I see him. Every time. We it should, kind of we should also, yeah, we should also establish that Sunnydale is built on the Hellmouth. Yes. Uh, El, El, was it El Boca del something, El Diablo or something like that, like the Spanish said. The El Diablo Hellmouth. del Sol? Yeah. So, uh, th th turns out, and I, I don't know if it's actually told in this one or the next one, Adelia, about uh, why the master's there. But he rises out of a pool of blood. And luckily, no blood sticks to him. Yeah, that was very amusing to watch that. Yeah, he comes back. He comes out dry, which is nice. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. What? These vampires are ugly. Yeah. They are ugly. That's kind of the point. So, yeah. so... Yeah, but you know, like there's other uh, shows where and movies where vampires don't look like that. You know yes. what I mean? But like, I love it. I love how like they, when you know when you know they're when they're vampires, they're d these disgusting looking things that are, you know, that make me shrivel. And then when they're not, you know, the producer explained why. Why he said he didn't want to have. A 16 year old girl running around stabbing normal looking people in the heart with a piece of wood. He wanted it, he wanted them to look more demonic so that people could separate what she's doing with being with good and evil. And Makes also, sense. the makeup gets a little toned down. Like uh, at the beginning here, or whatever, like, like you said, it's awful white and stuff like that. Uh, it turns out that makeup took a long time to do so they're going to start doing it a, a, a little more subtly moving forward still the same kind of uh, to it but uh yeah it's not it's not always gonna look like that uh so uh good old what's his what did, we, what did i say that thomas thomas says like he's gonna take uh buffy out or he's gonna take uh willow out to the ice cream store like yeah. all right at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, because, yeah, on a school night or whatever it is. No, I think it was. My ice cream store still open at that night. Yeah, well, you know. I, also, he, he says that, like, Willow says, oh, it's this way. And he says, I know a shortcut. And he's going the other way. And she doesn't question it. Well, all right. Okay, yeah. no shortcut. I've lived in this town my entire this, life, too. This is like, how you know this that woman is deprived of male attention and just attention in general. She just went with everything that person said. She's day seizing. Okay, mm -hmm. give her a break. Uh, no, I won't. Because at least when you're daisies and use your brain. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Buffy uh, was upstairs and she pointed out the uh, vampire to Giles, and all of a sudden she sees uh, Willow walking off with him, and she goes running after him, breaks, uh, finds a chair, like breaks a leg off into a perfect spike, mind you, and feels someone coming up against her, and it's. Cordy, but she didn't know it already has her hand to her throat, and that's where the whole what is your childhood trauma line comes. And then she says, I have to phone everybody I've ever met right now. I love it. 
Cordy's yeah. so great. Cordy's so great. So, uh, young Thomas, young Thomas, uh, brings Willow to a ma mausoleum, I think. Is that yes, it was a mausoleum. It's my, I, like, I love that word. Throws her in, and she says, that's not funny. Or whatever. He's like, oh, whatever. Uh, Darla comes in behind and says, uh, uh, why didn't you, like, this is barely enough, to, uh, barely enough for one. And he says, why mm -hmm. didn't you bring something? She says, I did. And then comes Jesse holding his neck. Okay, so, so he got bit, right? He got bit? But he, he's, he's not a vampire yet because he needs to suck her blood. He needs to drink their blood, right? Uh, yeah. So if I just get bit, it's just, it's just, he thought he got a hickey. So okay, so so it's just gonna leave a mark. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah, like, there's gonna be teeth marks. Yeah. So like, but so like, there needs to be a ritual of, you know, turning them into vampires. Because you know, other vampire shows, you, you just get bit and you're done. Like you ever seen like the Vampire Diaries or the originals, where no, are no? you? Are you kidding me? One vampire oh, okay. shows up. I've seen okay, a little okay, bit. Of, okay, okay. I've, I've seen a little bit of vampire aficionados. I've seen a little Jeez. bit of True Blood. Until I've that's seen True still, Blood. Yeah, until that yeah, and crazy. like it, we're like you know they, they they get bit and they're vampires right away, but this right. one they they created like you gotta have a go through a process and you know and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right. Well. uh <laughs> Before that happens, Buffy runs in and does some um, Buffy speak, and then we finally get to see Buffy doing. Why do you some keep saying language? Buffy speak? What, what do you? What, 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 what does that mean? The way she talks, the, like her dialogue, is just it's different. What, what do you mean what, on purpose? I don't know. On I don't know. I never, I never thought I'd have to explain this. So it's not like I wrote out the words fair. <laughs> what do you want from me, Rob? I ask questions. You keep saying stuff. You think I don't? I've never seen this show. Have this you, is okay. the first time I've ever seen this show. If you listen to what she said, that's how she talks. That's all I mean. It's she's just talking. Is it? No, there's nothing special about it. No, right. okay. No, it's, it's, she definitely uses some wording and phrasing that most people would not use when speaking. Especially there's a lot of quips. Them. Yeah, especially to two vampires. The two yeah. vampires are not used to a little girl talking to them like this. She's talking like a superhero. Right? Yeah. They don't know that she's, she's a superhero. Buffy speak is very quippy. It's very, like, to relate it to superheroes, it's very marvel -y. Yeah, yeah. She, she sounds like Andrew Garfield from Amazing Spider-Man. It's jokes. It's just a lot of quips. Yeah. So okay. anyways, Thomas becomes the first vampire to get dusted on the show mm -hmm. so we can all remember where we were the first time we saw a dusty vampire now uh i was in this chair an hour ago very good <laughs> uh so in the next couple episodes and stuff like that like in the next couple times you see vampires they don't always do this so in the beginning it's a little it's a little here and there oh whatever, they don't just so. they don't just evaporate to dust well, you don't see it. A, B. Uh, it sometimes too much it, money. It, 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 exactly it. Uh, it would just cost way too much money. So to, they, uh, they get stabbed and they fall off off camera and they're dead. Yeah, that's yeah. You'll, nice, see, nice. you'll yeah you'll see other things or whatever in the next episode. There's a pool's cue. So just so you know. So uh, in behind her, mm -hmm. while she's about to take her Darla, uh, here comes Luke. Luke grabs her, beats her up a little bit. Uh, she tries fighting back, but it, uh, at the end, he opens up the crypt, throws her in, jumps in, says amen, and is going to bite her. And then for the next 143 episodes, I guess, we just all talk about remember how Buffy uh, almost uh, won that fight because I guess she gets killed right away. What? <laughs> no, okay. Okay, so we'll... So it's to be continued. So I'm only imagining that's could what what could have happened. Okay. It might it might not happen, Ferris. All right. She might she might make it through, but we'll have to wait till uh, the next episode. Find out. Yes, I actually gonna I actually want to watch the next episode like right away. I was gonna I was gonna play I was gonna play the next episode. Like I was gonna play it. I was like, no, nah, I can't. Nope. Gotta read this next week. And because because oh. Rob because he was the Rob. If I if I start a show. I'm gonna watch like eight episodes and like I get it. It's like I actually like this show. Oh yeah. 
since it's I've done, good. since uh, I got back from uh, Arizona, I've rewatched the first season twice. Rob, I got a question, man. Arizona smelled weird, right? Yeah, a little bit. A little See, bit. On you. Earth. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I told like, Adelia, I told Adelia all this the asides that we've had in this episode so far, Ferris, that was the most random. <laughs> no, it's not random. Because last week I told you it Arizona smelled it when we were there, and you're like, what are you talking about? No, it didn't. Blah 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 blah. I, 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 like I told to you point out I, I live in Nebraska surrounded by cows. Yeah. It didn't smell weird to me. Yeah, it didn't smell like agriculture. No. It smelled like sand. It I don't know. Weird. It was a, there you go. I guess every place Anyways, smells, I have its own sense. I was, I was, my senses were also heightened because I was like running on like three hours of sleep. Oh my gosh. Okay. I almost well, fell asleep at the Cheesecake Factory. Let me know. I want you guys to let me know when you watch uh, the second episode. When you guys watch The Harvest. It's going to be after this review. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, I, got some, I, got something to, I got something to show you guys. That's all I'm going to say. When, uh, when you're done this, I'm going to send you something to watch. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's a little something for you. And we can talk about that. And we can talk about the harvest uh, next time as well. Uh, Adelia, thanks for joining us on the council. Uh, where can of people course. find you on the good old interwebs? Um, you can find me on Twitter or X or whatever the app is called this week at Adelia Jambo. Uh, you can find me on the uh, LGRN Entertainment channel. That's the channel this is on. Uh, with uh, Ferris every Friday night, 8 p.m. Pacific on the open table. I don't know what we're talking about this week yet, but we will figure it out. And on the Highlights channel every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific with Snark doing Starting 11, our English Premier League recap show. Nice. Ferris, how about you? You guys can find me here every Friday, 8 o'clock Pacific, like Adelia said, as well as on our sports channel every Friday, 3 o'clock Pacific, me and Caleb talk. NFC East, American football. He's a giant. He's a Cowboys fan. I'm a Giants fan. Um, you know, sadness and happiness for, I guess, one of us or all of us. Wow. Especially me. Wow. Yeah. It's deep. I know. It's incredibly deep. Well, thank you for sharing your pain with everybody, Ferris. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Hey, you can find me on Let's Get Ready Network uh, weekends with LGRN After Snark. That's the show I do with Danny, where we can talk about whatever we want to talk about and no one can tell us what to do. And oh, yeah, I'm also on the Loki Rewatch show. But most of all, well, also, of course, it's starting left with Adelia. But most of all, I am so happy and excited that we are doing this show. The Rewatchers Council is something that uh, I've been looking forward to for so long. I've been wanting to talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer for so long. And I'm so glad that you guys were here with me talking about it. I can't wait to talk about The Harvest. Until then, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, Can't wait to talk about it with you, Rob. Yeah. Because you could – because I'm – when you told me this, you this you this is one of your favorite shows. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you, Rob. I was taken aback. You know why? No, because you're no like idea. 50. So the timeline didn't add up. It threw me off. All right, but 23 when it came out. I was younger than you. It's a good point. All right, Rob. All right, it's a good point. Thank you for ruining my joke. Um, <laughs> but I can see why you love it because mm -hmm. that at first episode kind of grabbed me, and I liked how they didn't give me an origin. Of her, she's like, oh, she's already a badass. Deal with it. There's a movie. You can watch it if you want. It's it's not required at all. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Was she, Sarah though, Michelle Geller in it? No, Christy Swanson. And then, she was fine. then then the movie doesn't matter. Yeah, it was fine, but it, you don't yeah. need to see it. You don't need to see all it. Right. There's nobody else. Nobody. But yeah, man. But but I'm saying is that you oozed passion. Yeah. You oozed passion. Yeah. And you know what, man. I love I love talking passion with people because you know what I am, Rob. What's that? I am personification of passion. Okay. The Earth is doomed. Well, I was just trying to compliment Rob Adelia, but you know, 
sort of that attitude. That, I can that, see. I can. That, I can see why Cordelia is your it. favorite character. I can see it. I can see it you now. You have no idea why Cordelia is my favorite character. I, yet, you know right? what? I'm. 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 I'm gonna stick to my guns and just say it whenever I want to. Thanks, everyone. Okay. <laughs>